This is Mr. Guthrie here doing another video tutorial. This time we're going to look at Boyle's Law, or rather P1 times V1 will equal P2 times V2. So we're going to again use the exact same problem that we did in class here, so make sure you've got your notes out uh, as you're practicing along with this to be able to kind of correlate or work back and forth with those things. So without further ado, let's get started. Is P1 times V1 equals P2 times v2. So this problem here says a sample of gas occupies 344 centimeters cubed at a pressure of 77.8 kilopascals. What will the volume be at 23.35 kilopascals? Well, we always set this up by defining what our variables are. So in our first situation, we have a sample of gas that is occupying 344 centimeters cubed, and that's a volume. So I'll write down V1 as being 344 centimeters cubed. And again, I know it's a volume because of that centimeters cubed value. Also, it's saying it occupies or takes up that much space. Now, at that exact same moment of time, that sample of gas also has a pressure of 77.8 kilopascals. So since it's at the same time as that first volume, it's the P1, 77.8 kilopascals. All right, now we have a new situation. Basically, we have a situation where the pressure has changed. So we have a new pressure. So pressure 2, because it's at a second moment in time here, and that pressure is now 23.35 kilopascals. Alright, the big question is, what will the volume be at this moment in time? Well, we don't know. And now we are set up. We've kind of got it down into just exactly what we need this to be. So remember the equation for Boyle's Law. So again, the equation we're going to use here is going to be just the ones that represent our variables. So we have a P1 and a V1. And that will equal a P2 times a V2. So that is Boyle's Law. It's the only thing that we had here. So that's what we kind of have to end up using. This is where I have to set it up so we can see all the different variables that we have and we can determine which gas law we're going to use. We only have pressures and volumes, so that is characteristic of Boyle's Law. So since we are again using that P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, we now simply just put in what we'd already written down. We wrote down our P1 as 77.8 kilopascals. And our V1 we wrote down as 344 centimeters cubed. And that equals our P2, 23.35 kilopascals. Oops. Kilopascals, and that's going to be multiplied by, I apologize for running out of room here, our V2, which we don't know what that is. That's what we're solving for. So now basically we treat V2 like we would X in an algebra problem. So let's go ahead and simplify all of this. 77.8 times 344 gives us 2,600. Oh, whoa, way off, excuse me. It'll be 26,000, important to know where that comma goes, 763.2. And now our units have not canceled out, so they're just kind of all right there. Kilopascals times centimeters cubed. And that equals 23.35 kilopascals times V2. All right, so to make sure that we get this right. We've got to solve for V2, which more or less means get V2 by itself. So we've got to get rid of the 23.35 kilopascals. To do that, we divide by it. 23.35 kilopascals, meaning that all will cancel out. What you do on one side, you do on the other in algebra. So over here, 23.35 kilopascals. And now we go ahead and simplify. So 23.35 kilopascals canceled on that side, leaving us with our V2. 
And if I look at this, I know my units on the left side cancel out of kPa, kPa, leaving me with centimeters cubed. And now I simply just need to divide those two numbers to get my final answer. 26,763.2 divided by 23.35 gives me an answer of 1,146.2 centimeters cubed. And that right there represents my final answer, the second volume that I wanted to find. And that's all you got to do to solve Boyle's Law.